There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads. And you know, I didn't check the temperature before I left the house in my shirt sleeves. Long shirt sleeves, but no coat. And I am freezing. Still haven't checked. Yeah, it's 10 degrees. <laughs> it's a little cold. This might be one of my last al fresco Friday Reads of the season, but you know, the temperature still goes up and down. Uh, when it's 10 degrees, it's too cold, but I've got a can of, of hot coffee and the sun should peek out behind a cloud any minute and I'll probably be fine. I've had an interesting reading week. I'm not sure what other adjective to use. I won't come up with one probably until the end. But I have finished five books. Uh, Doris and I finished this uh, Faber story, Mrs. Fox by Sarah Hall. Our review is up. It was too surreal for me, so I think I gave it two stars because I just hated that. I hate that kind of story, but the writing was excellent. I have finished the anthology, The Best American Short Stories 2018, edited by Roxanne Gay. This was three quarters of a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life, in that she was reading it and having trouble getting a sense of momentum with it, and she talked about it on a Friday Reads or something, and I said, hey, why don't, I've got it on script, why don't we buddy read the rest of it together, and we did that, a story a week, until she finished, and then I went back to read the first quarter that she had previous, that she had already read on my own, and I have now finished. Four star read, there was some really great stories, there were some pretty awful stories, but most of them were good enough that, uh, or excellent, so four stars. I don't know if it's recency bias, but I actually enjoyed some of the ones in the first quarter more. I think the last one I read was by an indigenous Canadian writer, Alicia Elliott, called On Earth, originally published in the Saskatchewan Literary Journal, Grain. So I don't know what the criteria was for Best American Stories, but I know that indigenous North American literature has a whole other way of being categorized, and I'm not familiar with it, but anyway, I was glad it was there because it's the first thing I've ever read by her, and I now will go on to read more. There was a short story by Emma Klein, and she had a novel come out a couple of years ago that I had no interest in reading. Got very mixed reviews, but the subject matter was not interesting to me. But wow, this story was amazing, and she's a great writer, so I will follow her from now on. I finished the two novellas that I had mentioned a few weeks ago. I finally finished them. One was For Gone With The Book, the third, Miss Simons, by F. M. Mayer, originally published in the 40s, I think. I can't remember now. And I don't care to look it up because it was pretty bad. Would you like a plot synopsis? She was born unhappy. Her family didn't like her. She went to school. Nobody liked her there. She tried to get married, but nobody liked her well enough to marry her. She tried to get close to her family, but they still didn't like her. And then she tried to make friends, and nobody liked her, and then she died. Yeah, it was just really subpar read. And the Korean novel, Stingray, by Kim Joo Young, translated from the Korean by Louis Vinciguerra and Inrei Yu Vinciguerra, and it wasn't, didn't end up being very good either. Three stars. It was about a single mother and her 14-year-old son it was in the winter in the, some, in the boonies of Korea. The husband had wandered off years before and there was a lot of shame in the family that the husband had left and the mother had isolated she and her son from the community and it was snowing a lot. Strangers kept wandering in and out of the house and being kind of taken under her wing. I thought the perspective of the adolescent boy was fairly well done in places and I felt an emotional tug towards both him and his mother. But the translation was just awful. Oh was really clunky and so I don't know if a lot got lost in translation but by the end I just thought it wasn't hadn't really been worth my time so I didn't like it that's my second third foray into Korean literature and it's not going well people I finished this yesterday and you know what I'm still gonna keep you in suspense because I was hoping to film my review last night and get it up online and that didn't happen so I will film it tonight and it'll go up tomorrow and in the meantime stay tuned oh the drama <laughs> so those are what I finished so that's pretty good a lot of those 
had been um, long-term reads. And I have bailed on two. I'm getting my bail and mojo back. <laughs> so this is one that I've started and bailed on in the same week, and that is Barbara Collins, Our Spoons Came From Woolworths. What a piece of crap this was. This was a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life and cousin of Always Doing. And I am delighted to tell you that it was a group bail. The three of us held hands and jumped together. Barbara Commons, what's, what's the deal with her? I have, this is my second bail of hers. I'm done with her, but why does anybody like her? I don't get it. The writing was terrible. It was about a stupid woman. Like, I, 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 I can't get drawn into a fictional narrative where the protagonist is such a fucking idiot that you just want to... Like, it does, it's not funny, it's not entertaining. She had a bad marriage, and everybody was, nobody was treating her very well, and, and she just was clueless. So I think I read, I can't remember how much, 40%. And that was 36.2%, too much. Just one of the worst books ever published. <sighs> and similarly, <laughs> That Anita Desai collection of short stories was garbage. Diamond Dust. I bailed in the third story, about 12 pages into the title story, Diamond Dust. And it was about an Indian man who got a dog and his wife didn't like the dog. And the neighbors down the street didn't like the dog and the dog was very naughty. That was the story. Why are all these shitty books coming to me so? That was a buddy read with Joe Smith, and we both bailed on that. So I'm having a lot of great... I'm an influencer. <laughs> Sean, the, Sean the bailing influencer. There's the title of this video. Maybe her novels are good. She's supposed to be good, but these stories were tepid and bland. <laughs> so those were my bails. And I have... Oh, I've only started one new one, and that was to try to... to I wanted something to fill in the gap where the Barbara Commons book had been. And that was one that I first found out about on Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me's channel. So, oh, I got some pronunciation help and I've already forgotten it. I think Saudad by Sunita Perez da Costa. I will paste in a corrected pronunciation if need be. It is written in English and uh, da Costa is an Australian Angolan writer of Indian descent. And I have only read the first chapter, and it's stunning. The writing is so beautiful. I don't even, can't even tell you what it's about yet, because I just read the first chapter a couple days ago and was wowed. That's the only new one I have started. So that's been kind of a weird week. Um, even some of the stuff that I'm reading isn't going all that well, but some of it is, so I'm still feeling stimulated. In terms of books that I might start, I don't have any... Buddy Reads scheduled for the next seven days, but I may pick up this new, fairly new novel by Rowan Haseo Buchanan, Starling Days. It's not long, it's not short, it's just average length, and I think I can fit it in, especially if I have more bales, and I've been dying to read it since it was published a few months ago. And I'm not sure if it'll be this week, but possibly this week I will start the next in the Faber stories, and this one I have high, high hopes for, and that's the Anna Burns story mostly hero and it's chunky for this is the longest it's 125 pages and that will be a, as part of doris's and my ongoing series of scintillating discussions on this very unimpressive series of short stories anna we're counting on you so that's it no that's not it editing sean remembered that on monday i'll be starting a buddy read of a short story collection from australia this taste for silence by Amanda O'Callaghan, a book very enthusiastically recommended by Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me, and this will be a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life. Fingers crossed this one will go better. So what's been on YouTube? Things I've watched recently, things I'm looking forward to watching. Uh, Eric Carl Anderson hit 10,000 subscribers. I can't believe he's not at 250,000 subscribers. He's got a great reintroduction video up, a call for questions and a very touching story about his first day of school. I don't need to shout Eric out on my channel, but if you haven't watched that video, it's fabulous. Byways in Byland is back from his retreat. 
Sabrina of Unmanaged Mischief is back. She did a reading check-in a couple days ago, which I'll link, and I see she's got some a new video up that I haven't seen yet about grad school. I watched Alan Morton's November mid-month wrap-up, and he has a new rating system, which is very catchy. I might steal it from you, Alan. And he read a book that was a childhood favorite of mine, The Memoir of the Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. And I had I was listening to it while I was out and about, and I haven't had a chance to leave Alan a comment, but I can't believe how much I've retained of that book from when I was 12 or something. So it was a delight to hear you talk about it. Jay Shea has a review of Cousin Bet, which he's told me I shouldn't watch until I finish the book, so I won't. Oh, a new channel, to be new to me channel, that I definitely want to shout out, so I'll just uh, hook that shout out on this uh, tag video of mine that he did. He's done a few of my tags recently. Book Wanting is the channel. I don't haven't got his name yet, but Book Wanting, a very articulate fellow with in very interesting taste in books, and he did my two books with one stone tag yesterday, so I'll link that, but do check him out. I have been delighted by Karen of Run Right Reads videos since the birth of her darling baby girl. There's one here, uh, the, her latest one from yesterday I haven't had a chance to watch. A reading with Baby Vlog. Greg of Supposedly Fun started a discussion series on Goodreads star ratings, so I will link his video and also Jacqueline's of Six Minutes for Me's response video. That's an interesting discussion. I don't think I have much to add to it, but it was very interesting to watch. And the only thing I added was that I found a tweet, which I forwarded, I cop sent to them on Twitter yesterday. Somebody, there's her uh, Twitter ID, just tweeted out randomly. I don't know what the context was, but this is her tweet. Don't trust my Goodreads reviews if they're from like 2015. I don't know her. <laughs> Yeah, that's another layer of the discussion about Goodreads ratings and reviews, eh? All right, that's all I got. I hope you've had a great reading week, and I expect a full report down in the comments. Thanks for watching.